We're going to kind of handle the logic at a single step. The actual logic of this game is really easy, right? Did you go around the circle? Yes, cool. Did you do it three times? Yes, you're done. Uh, there's not a whole lot of logic to this, so we're gonna kind of handle this all at once. We're gonna add something called a game manager, which is a name that I like to use for something that manages the game. I know it sounds clever, but there's also a particular style we use to like sort of build these, and I'm gonna talk about that a little bit, and it involves a little bit of code, and, and we're gonna see how this sort of works. So back in Unity here, I've got my, my ship, I've got all this stuff going on, and I need some way to know that I have completed a game, we're gonna add some UI in the next step and stuff like that, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about what our game manager is and then we're gonna sort of use it here. So I'm gonna go to my scripts folder and I'm gonna notice that one of these things is not like the other, all right? One of these things does not belong. And so Unity basically takes any script, yeah, that's right, uh, Unity basically takes any script named game manager and makes it look like that. I'm not sure when that happened, but it happens now. Um, and it's just a common thing to call some centralized object that keeps track of our game. And I'm gonna open it up. And it's a fairly simple thing. And so the first thing that, that might catch some people a little off guard, especially if you're not a programmer, and we're not gonna spend a ton of time on this, is that a game manager has a public static reference to itself, at least this one does. What that effectively means is that I don't need to have a reference to this game manager. I can just say, game manager, wherever you are, do this, or I need that, or whatever, right? So I can just get a reference to it globally, easily, right? It's just in one centralized location, which is a pretty cool thing. Uh, this is a design pattern a lot of programmers call a singleton, and a lot of programmers who come from certain disciplines immediately hate me, uh, because in certain uh, uh, circles, singletons are really evil, and Unity, they're really good. Uh, so just, uh, just keep that in mind. And if you don't have any idea what I'm talking about right now, don't worry about it. I've mostly made up everything I just said. Um, <laughs> so really don't worry about it. So we have this game manager, it just has a reference to itself, so we can always just say, game manager, are you out there? Yes, well then do this for me, whatever. So then we're gonna define some race settings, how many laps we need, uh, where our vehicle movement is, so we know how fast the vehicle's going and stuff like that. We have some UI references that don't exactly exist yet. We, haven't, we don't have a ship UI, we don't have some lap times UI. We have this game manager, or game over UI, which is, is in here and I'll show you here in a second. And then we just have some variables to keep track of the state of our game. So first off, is the game over? Right? Has, if the game is over, then we're gonna kind of stop doing everything. And then has the game even begun? If the race hasn't begun, we're still not gonna do anything. So there's gonna be a sweet spot between the race has started and the race has finished where everything is going to take place. Now we have an awake method. Awake is very much like start. You saw a start method previously. Awake just runs before start. When the object first starts up, it's first created. And we're basically saying, hey, if we don't have an instance, if we don't know what the game manager is, then guess what? We're the game manager, yay. But if we do have a game manager and it's not us, boo, we destroy ourselves. All right, so the game manager says, if I'm the first game manager, then I'm the game manager. If I'm not, then I'm just gonna go away because you can only have one game manager and it's gonna destroy itself, right? It makes sense, you don't wanna have two. Um, and so then we're gonna initialize our scene in a slightly different way. So I have on enable, very much like start, very much like awake, on enable is called every time we turn an object on. So if I were to enable it and disable it and enable it and disable it in the inspector, on enable is getting called every time I turn it on. It's also getting called the first time it's created, anytime it is enabled. And we are going to say, let's start a coroutine. Now, coroutine might sound like a really complex thing, but it's basically just something that allows us to delay or wait or just do something in steps. So instead of saying like, clean your room, and you go clean your room, you say clean your room and I'll do this part today and I'll do the next part tomorrow and the next part after that. It just allows us to like stop and then come back at a, a later date. The reason we're doing that is that right now, we, we don't have to do that. Right now we can just start and initialize right when this starts up, but later we're gonna have a cutscene, right? And the cutscene is gonna have our camera fly around and it's gonna show some cool stuff before the race has technically begun while the players are waiting to begin playing. During that time, the game hasn't begun yet. So if we start the game up on our first frame, like right when the game manager starts up, well then the game is running and time is accumulating while our cinematic is playing, which is not what we want. By waiting a single frame in order to start the game, we give the cutscene, the timeline, just enough time to say, stop game manager, wait, and then do its thing, and they go, okay, now go, right? We need to wait a single frame to make that happen, and so that's why we do this as what's called a coroutine. So inside this init method, this coroutine, 
We're basically just updating our UI, our lap number, and then we're saying, wait, a single frame, yield return null, just wait one second. Not even a second, really, just a single frame, which is a mill millisecond, right? Um, and then, then it's gonna initialize and do the rest of the stuff, which is where it's gonna get our lap times ready to go and say, okay, now the race has begun. All right, so just gonna wait a single frame for that. Inside update, we're gonna update our UI. If we currently have an active game, we're gonna add the amount of time that's passed, which is time delta time, the amount of time that has passed, to our lap times, and we're just gonna update our lap time UI. Whenever the player completes a lap, so whenever the method player completed a lap is called, we're gonna say, hey, is the game already over? If it is, I don't know how the player managed to go through the, the and finish line again, so whatever, but we're just gonna ignore it and get out of here. Otherwise, we're gonna increment our lap, so we'll go from lap one to two and two to three and so on. We're gonna update some UI, and we're gonna say, okay, if we've completed as many laps as we need, we completed three and we're supposed to complete three, that means the game is over. So is game over is true? We update the final UI time, and then we show this other game object that's gonna pop up and just says, game over, would you like to play again? We have these UI methods, which aren't super important right now because we don't have any UI yet. We'll see those in the next couple steps. But basically saying, if we have a UI, update it. If we have a UI, update it. If we have a UI, update it, so on and so forth. And click and drag and break everything. Um, basically saying, you know what, just, just pass some values into the UI and then it's just gonna appear in the UI. And you'll see what I mean by the way, UI user interface, in case anyone's going, what the hell is he talking about? Um, we'll see that in, in the next couple steps. So I'm just kind of glossing over right now. If something is an active game, that means the race has begun and it is not game over, all right? So this concept might seem a little familiar because if we recall, back in the player input, the very first script we looked at today, we said, hey, if there's a game manager and it is not an active game, then we have no inputs. Our rudder and our thruster is zero and we are not breaking. So basically, if the game has not begun but we do have a game manager, then no inputs. That way we can't drive before you know it's time or we can't drive after the game is done. Right? That's how we disable our players. All right, so in effect, this is a fairly easy thing to work with. So I'm gonna go down to my prefabs folder and in my prefabs folder, I have a game manager folder and I have a game manager prefab which I'm just gonna drag and drop into my hierarchy. So there's my game manager and it has a game over UI on it and if I turn it on, my game view, it looks like this. Game over, would you like to replay? All right, so I'm just gonna leave that off right now because it shouldn't be on to start. And if you wonder, okay, there's this UI, where did that come from, how do we make that? That's the next couple steps. So we have a UI right now, but you'll learn, you'll, you'll see exactly how this whole thing came together here in the next couple steps. And so our game manager just says, okay, how many laps have we done? So the default's three, I'll leave that at three. For the vehicle movement, uh, I'm just gonna click the circle selector. There's only one in my scene, so that makes it nice easy. I'll just double click on my ship. I don't have these other two things, so I'm just gonna leave that as is. So that's all well and good. It's gonna start accumulating time and doing all that cool stuff, but I don't have any way of knowing did I complete a lap, right? There's, what does that mean? What does completing a lap mean when I have no real finish line or anything? So down inside this game manager folder, I also have this finish line. I'm gonna drag and drop that in the hierarchy as well, and it's gonna create a giant cineplex screen. All right, so I'm gonna get this thing. This is my finish line. So the finish line has a simple script on it called the finish line script, which basically says if the player or the player sensor, remember the, the trigger collider that was on the very beginning of the ship we talked about, you know, the beginning of step four, if that passes through this object here, we complete a lap. Not only that though, to keep the players from cheating where they can just drive through and then drive back, we have a little second collider up here. Prevent some cheating, be a little shifty here. You have to pass through this collider before you can pass through that one. So the only way to pass through this collider is either to fly, which our ships cannot do, or to complete a lap, right? So that keeps them honest. So they, come, they pass through this collider, that allows them to pass through this collider, and then they've completed a lap. Now the last thing I'm gonna do here is this wall doesn't look very good. Right, and so one of the cool things I wanted to show you all is how we can add materials to objects in our scene. And so I wanna change the material on this ship and I could do a lot of things, I could right click and create a material and set up all this stuff on it um, or I could click on the finish line here and I could find its material setting in here somewhere and swap it out and do all this stuff. But here's another thing I can do. In my project folder, my project view, I don't know where all my materials are so I can click this little button here, it says search by type, it's got a little triangle, a circle, and a square, and I'm gonna click material, and that's gonna show me every material I have in my project. 
Here they are. And I've got three or four materials that I'm considering here. So I've got this edge blue, edge green, edge orange, and edge red. Doesn't really matter which one I use, I'm gonna do blue. And I can just click and drag it onto the wall. You can see here, just it previews what it's gonna look like. That was what it would look like on some rocks. If I wanted it there, and we're in the back, we're up on the sky, we, right? But I don't, I'm gonna put it right there, and I'll just let go, and now it's applied there. So that is my finish line. So I don't wanna actually sit up here and complete three whole laps right now, um, cause that would not be necessary. So if I go on my finish line, one other thing I can do is I have just a checkbox called debug mode. If I turn that on, I don't need to complete a whole lap. Every time I pass through there, it's counted as a lap. And so I'll just click debug mode, and now, I will drive through. You know what, I'm actually gonna mute that audio. I'm um, gonna drive through, so there's one, and then two, and then three. Oh wait, maybe the second time I didn't leave all the way. Three, there we go, game over. I can no longer control my player or anything, and if I want I can just click replay and it brings me back. It's worth mentioning that the actual thing triggering what is going through the finish line is that sensor from the beginning. Yes, exactly, the, the one on the very tip of the ship there. And so there we go. So it's a relatively simple step. So what you're gonna do is basically you're gonna go to your prefabs folder and then the game manager folder and locate the game manager prefab and just drag that into your hierarchy. And on the game manager where it says vehicle movement, you can just click the circle selector. There's only one in the scene, your ship, and so you can just add that. And then you're gonna to go to your finish line prefab and drag that into your hierarchy. Again, you wanna drag that into your hierarchy. If you dragged it into your scene view, you don't really know where it's gonna be, and that collider that's put up on the racetrack behind you is also gonna be somewhere. We don't know where, it may not even be on the track. So you definitely wanna drag that into the hierarchy. And then finally, in your project window, if you click the little sort button here and you go to materials, all right, that's gonna show you every material you have, and I highly recommend edge blue, edge green, ed edge orange, or edge red. If you really wanted to though, you could do just kind of whatever you want. I mean, just any material, but uh, there we go. Whatever, word wall. Um, but yeah, but otherwise, just the edge ones are the ones for that. And then, if you want, you can save your scene, make three laps, uh, and then your, your inputs will be cut off and that, that UI will pop up. Um, or you can go on the finish line and just hit debug and just go back and forth through it a couple of times, and that will do it as well.